Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... No, Mrs. Peel. I positively refuse to allow it. I beg you not to. Now, Captain Cordell is here. Please leave him here. But Mrs. Peel beckoned to old Tom and Bob, and they got to work. Some time later... Oh, well, come on, then. Let's find out what it's all about. Although, I must say, I think you're mistaken. As usual, Mrs. Peel. We'll see. Ah, there, you see? He's still there. He's still dead. Yes, except that this time, the cause of death is quite clear. He's been shot. Look there. In the middle of Cordell's forehead was a neat black bullet hole. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed has a completely new experience, and Mrs. Peel wonders if his disappearance might not give rise to... A Grave Charge. Captain Eric Cordell had been part of the investigating team in a case which started with Helen Pritchard losing her memory, having been thrown from a train. She thought she'd seen a man who was dead. Later, it was proved that he was still alive. John Steed and Emma Peel, who had been called in, had unearthed many baffling facts at the Happy Meadows burial ground. In a considerable number of cases, coffins in the Paradise plot had been found to be empty. Mrs. Peel and Mr. Happy Chap, the manager of the concern, had spent a long night's vigil watching for grave snatchers. There had been none. Later, Mrs. Peel got a hunch about Captain Cordell's demise. She reported to Mother. Shot! 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 Oh, we sound like a commentary on a table tennis match. But Cordell wasn't shot. I saw the body myself. Not a mark on him. Shot! I saw the mark on him, the forehead. Cordell is in the Paradise Plot. He is dead and he was murdered. Shot. Shot. Oh, no, don't start all that all over again. Any ideas? Well, that's a long shot. A steed! I'm oh, sorry, Mother. Oh, I wonder if it's too late to hand this case over to another department. Emma, you say that you stayed at the Paradise Plot all night? I did. You can ask Kathy Chap. He was there with me. He'll tell you. Yes, he, of course, would be uncompromising. So, no one approached the grave during the night? No one. How could all this happen? The underground movement, it must be. There's got to be a logical explanation. Well, if there is, I don't... Dick it? Yeah. I suppose it's only to be expected. An open and shut case. Open the grave, shut up the grave. Hmm. You say that happy chap was with you all the time. He, he can witness to all this? He can. What do we do? Get rid of the case. Hand it back to old Croker Way's goose and his new department. I could dress up the report and make it seem simple and straightforward. Be, uh... Be, uh down to earth, in fact. I think we've got to carry on. Approach it from another angle. What does that mean, Steed? Cordell ended up dead, but he started by talking to Mrs. Jupp, the widow of Jonathan Jupp, right? Yes, that's so. Well, then I think I must travel the same road. I'll pay Mrs. Jupp a visit. What are you saying? What do I... Do? Be careful. <laughs> Surely there was nothing to fear from a visit to Mrs. Jupp. The strange little woman was becoming quite bewildered by unexpected callers. During all her long years of marriage to Jonathan Jupp, she'd hardly seen another man. 
now she'd seen two in as many days. Yes, yes, Mr. Cordell was here. He was so very nice. And he inquired into the circumstances of your husband's death? Uh, yes, of course, I, I couldn't tell him a great deal. Just that I was left rather impoverished. He said that surely that was rather strange because Jonathan was a rich man. And I said... Quite. No, I said you can't take it with you. I wonder... Uh, that's what he said. Um, Mrs. Jupp, can you tell me... How is it that Happy Meadows came into this? I mean, what arrangements were made? You know, that is the strange thing, Mr. Steed. I was never consulted. Then how did Cordell get in touch with them? I don't know. I can only tell you that at one point he became very excited when I mentioned that my husband was taking me away on a trip. Oh? Yes. It was being planned by Mystic Tours. Mystic Tours? I think that's what I came to find out. Thank you, Mrs. Jupp. Thank you very much indeed. Steed said he would follow the same road as Cordell, and of course he did. He was welcomed at the travel bureau by Shaw. Good day. Uh, good day. I'm looking for a ticket to paradise. Aren't we all? One way. I beg your pardon. Well, you could say that I'm dead keen on it. Now, if you're a travel agency, I don't see the slogan that applies to me on these posters. Uh, but perhaps it isn't for the ordinary public. I don't think I quite understand what slogan interests you. Buy now, pay later. I think you'd better come into the other office, Mr. Steed. <laughs> John Steed followed Shaw through the inner door. He was moderately surprised to see what appeared to be a completely empty room. It had one bed, comprised of spiked nails. Lying along the bed was a thin, sun-tanned, middle-aged man. He appeared to be in a trance. Steed looked around. There were a couple of chairs. The seats were also of nails. Steed stood. A nice place you've got here. Shh. You are in the presence, Emma. The presence of the master. Wait. Master. Master. They advanced towards the man on the bed. Steed looked down. But the man isn't breathing. He's in a deep trance. How long has it been like this? He stopped breathing last Thursday. Oh, was it Friday? And how long will he remain like it? It is difficult to say. It takes a lot to wake him. Have you any money with you? Well, just some small change. It may do the trick. Uh, please give me all you have. Oh, very well. Thank you. He is sensitive to this sort of sound. <laughs> Usually works. <sighs> Lo, and when the grasshopper says I go, then it is time for the fish to leap. He's always like that. Profound. Mm. Of course. Master... We have a visitor, a child in search of the eternal truth. Then I say this to you, seek and ye shall find. Hardly original. Come with me and search. Come to me with the thirst for knowledge. What have you to bring? He's got money. He's got plenty of money. They are welcome. How much? Oh, unlimited supplies. They are doubly welcome. I shall take your hand and lead thee on a great adventure. Lo, and when the lotus withereth on the leaf, then it is time to go, go to... to paradise? Go to paradise? Eh? That's what he's here for. <sighs> and why, dear boy, didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, the master got up from the plate of glass that had protected him from the bed of nails. Steed showed surprise at this deception. Mm, shame, isn't it? The real thing is so uncomfortable. One has to put on a show. The uh, peasants expect it. They think one can't have wisdom without suffering. Such outdated thinking. <laughs> we know different, don't we, Mr... Steed. John Steed. Uh, glad to know you. And have some tea, I think. A suit you, Mr. Steed? Fine. Mm, how do you like your tea? Three spoonfuls uh, and one for the pot. Oh, please. I mean, don't mention that word here. Get the tea, please, Shaw. Yes, Master, at once. Oh, do sit down, Mr. Seed. Just upend the seat of the chair. The other side is delicious foam rubber. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Steed. I am a charlatan, a fraud, a taker in of the gullible. Well, that makes two of us. Yes, I am a charlatan, save in one respect. It's a secret I stumbled upon, a priceless secret which I'm prepared to impart to others for a fee. Ah, I can see that you are a genuine faker. But, of course, I understand. I'm sure we could come to some arrangement. From his pocket, Steed produced a large wad of ten-pound notes. Ah, so you made a killing. I shall need one-third, Mr. Steed. Hmm. Well, of course, that uh, all depends on what you're offering in return. Well, you've grown tired of life, dear boy. It's become unprofitable. Well, I'll arrange that you leave this life. Dispense with it and shuffle off this mortal coil. It's a question of money. I there's the rub. It is a transaction devoutly to be wished. Oh, quite. If you were dead, Mr. Steed, the world would not pursue you any further. The heat would be off. What? <laughs> I'll arrange your death for you. Well, frankly, I could arrange it myself. Ah, but I offer special after effects. A third of your money? All right. I accept. Excellent. <laughs> Won't live to regret it, I promise you. I sincerely hope I do. Eh? What, dear boy? Live. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Quite so. Have no fear. Well, I'll be back later and we can... Uh, Stay where you are. Shaw had entered with a tray of tea and a gun. I regret that you must stay now that you're here. Uh, but surely... You I... already know too much about us. You must remain incommunicado until the whole delicate affair is over. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. Incommunicado? Well, can't I even phone my mother? Not even her. Oh, very well, but when can you... Your arrange? death is already arranged. It'll be violent, but uh, quite painless. Shaw will take you. Go with him. Go where? And no more questions, please. <laughs> Not until it's over. Trust us. You have to, anyway. You're in our hands now. Hmm. Anything to say? Um, yes. No flowers, by request. <laughs> On a street corner sometime later, Shaw guided Steed by the elbow. This way, Steed. Now! Shaw suddenly grabbed Steed by the shoulder and shoved him in the path of an oncoming van. Next stop, Paradise. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen.